So today we are getting started on a, our lined dress. I want to talk to y'all about laying out your fabric for your dress and cutting it. Instead of trying to show y'all on the camera, because it gets a little complicated trying to show these very large pieces on camera. Um, instead, what I did was make a digital layout. So this is an example layout of how you would lay. All of these are the black labeled pieces. So this is all your self fabric pieces that you would lay on your cotton or linen or whatever fabric you chose for your fabric or for your dress. Um, and I copy and pasted anyone that is cut two. So this one you'll see is a cut one when I zoom in. So that one I've only placed on here once, but for instance, the hip pieces, this one is cut two. This one's also cut two. So you'll see I paste like uh, copy and pasted it and I flipped it so that it's that facing that other direction. So remember any uh, piece that is cut to, you need to make sure to flip it for this. So you, sh you should be looking at the back of the piece here um, for that second one. So I've got all of these on here. This is your entire um, layout. This is for 45 inch wide fabric. Um, if you have fabric that is wider than that, um, feel free to, you can place more over here to the right if your fabric is even wider. And then that allows you to buy a little bit less fabric. This one is set up for two yards, I believe, of the 45 inch wide fabric on your project sheet. If it was 60 inch wide fabric, I think you, I said you could buy uh, maybe a yard and a half or a yard and three quarters or something like that. So it's a little bit less if you've got 60 inch by fabric. Um, these layouts are not on Blackboard yet, but I will be putting them on Blackboard today. So this layout will be here for you to look at whenever you go on Blackboard. And then I labeled the edges. This is your selvage on either side. Whenever you lay out your fabric completely flat, your selvage should be on either side, going down the long side. And then that short side is the width of your fabric. Okay, so this, this top side would be the 45 inches wide. And then this long side would be the two yards or however much fabric you bought. Okay, and then we've got another layout here for your lining pieces. So these are the ones all labeled in blue, blue font here. We've got our skirt front, skirt back times two, front of our waistband, our pockets times four, because you need two for each side. So I've got two that are facing the left and two that are facing the right. Um, this is my front um, lining area. So below the facings where the rest of the bodice is lined, this is the front, back times two, and then back of our waistband times two. So that's all of your lining pieces. And I've got that labeled up here, lining fabric, so that you know which one you're cutting it out of. And again, your selvage is gonna go down that long side. And then the last layout that I did was for the fusing pieces. So this one is 24 inches wide, which is the typical width of fusible interfacing. And then so interfacing doesn't really have a selvage, but the long side is, um, this one is set up for just one yard, which is what your uh, project sheet asks for. So one yard going down the long side and then the 24 inches wide is going across the top. And then you've got your pieces laid out and this one was a cut too. So I pasted it, cut and pasted it twice. Okay. Are there any questions about laying these pieces out? You have three different fabrics to cut from. Your interfacing, when you cut this one, make sure it's the glue side down. So that bumpy side of the fabric needs to be facing down. Lining fabric, and then your self fabric, whatever fabric you chose for the outside of your dress. So the next thing we're gonna go to, let me see. Oh, this is a sketch of the dress. I just um, did a quick sketch but so you can get an idea of what this is gonna look like once we get it sewn. So it's gonna have a V-neck in the front. The black area is just showing you that that's the back of the dress. So on the back of the dress, it's gonna have a higher neckline. On the front, it's gonna have a V-neck. And 
uh, whenever you have a sketch like this, it's called a flat sketch and you have something that's showing through from the back, you usually sketch it in and make it dark to show that that is the back of the dress. So we would see the inside back of the dress here, V-neck, we've got darts, two bust darts. So we've got a horizontal bust dart and a vertical bust dart, both pointing at our bust here. Our little waistband, um, it's more narrow at center front and gets a little bit wider at the side seam. And then we've got these little hip pieces just for design. And instead of having a dart, this seam is going to give us our fit. Um, so that our dart is kind of swallowed by that seam. And then we have these curved seams here. These are called princess seams. And you'll, you'll hear a lot about that, especially whenever you get to pattern making. You can have princess seams up here on the top. They would go from the armhole curve over the bust and then go down to where that dart is. So instead of having a dart, you would have a seam that makes it fit to the bust shape. And that's called a princess seam. You can have them on the top or you can have them on the bottom here. So this one is helping it fit to our hip shape. Okay, so we have princess seams down on the skirt and then we're gonna have our little inseam pockets on the side. And then again, here on the back, we have darts going up to our shoulder blade area, waistband going across the back, these um, little hip seams that are in place of a dart, princess seams, and then the long line going down the back is our invisible zipper. So we'll have a center back seam where it zips up. <clears throat> are there any questions about that? I wanted to give you a picture so you know what you're going for and how all these pieces are going to fit together, but also um, so that you can figure out if you're, if you're using more than one fabric, you can color block this, or you could use print and a solid, or you can use two different prints, whatever you wanna do as far as um, mixing and matching fabrics. Um, I would try and get them, if you're mixing two different fabrics, they should either be the exact same fabric, so both cotton broadcloth, but two different colors or two different prints, um, or they should be the same weight. So it's, um, it's a little bit more challenging. It's not impossible, but it's a little bit more challenging to combine something that's lightweight with medium weight. Um, and so I want to wait and to, to do that another semester. So this semester, if you're combining any fabrics, um, just make sure that they're the same weight um, or even better is the exact same fabric with different colors. Okay, so over here, I've got my shell pieces cut out first. So I'm just doing mine out of a solid red fabric uh, for simplicity, but I've got my bodice front here. So I kind of organized my pattern pieces by the front and the back, and then also the outside and then the inside layers. So these are all the outside layers, the shell. So I've got bodice front, and then we've got these two drill holes here. We're gonna talk about those in a minute when we get to marking and doing our darts. Um, but that's my front. I've got my front waistband, which will fit just down here below my bodice and it'll attach to that bodice. Sorry, this thing got all wrinkled. There we go. So front waistband and then for our skirt area, we will have, this is our center front skirt piece. So looking at the very top of that, this is our waistline. This is that diagonal seam, that diagonal hip seam. And then this is part of that princess seam, that curved seam that we talked about. So the way this all fits together, let me scoot this aside for a second. So we've got center front, and then we've got side front skirt, which will fit right here. And then that little hip piece will fit up here. And if you see, we kind of see where that gap is, where the dart used to be. So when we sew these two together, it will take up that dart excess, that excess amount of fabric. Okay, so that's how our skirt pieces will fit together. Those are all my front ones. 
Your back ones will look very similar, except instead of the front being on fold or the front being a full piece, um, the back will have a seam down the center. So let's set these aside. Okay, so back bodice. So like I said, this one is cut two. Instead of it being one big piece, it has that seam going down the center back where we're going to put in our invisible zipper. So all of our back pieces will be similar to that. And on this one, we've got a dart here that's pointing up to our shoulder blade to fit that back area. And then we've got our back waistband piece. So that's the whole bodice for the back. And then we've got again, our pieces that fit together. So center back, this one will look very similar to the front once it gets mirrored and cut a second time. And then hip piece and our princess seam. Okay, so that's the whole shell. Now we'll look at the inside layers. <clears throat> okay, so this is my stack of my inside layers. I've got my bodice front facing. So this is the facing that will finish off the neckline and the armhole of our front piece. And then we've got interfacing that goes with that. And we'll use that in a minute when we interface our pieces. And then I've got my front waistband for the lining. This one, uh, my printer didn't print it out in blue, but if you look at the document, it's supposed to be blue. It just kind of printed out grayscale. So it didn't quite print that correctly. But this one is all blue, cut out of the lining. And then we've got our bodice front. So the way this one fits together is with the facing. And this one has our two darts to help fit it. And then it's going to get put together with this facing piece to create our full bodice here. And what happened on the pattern, the reason we don't have two darts, if you looked at our other front bodice, it had two darts on either side. It had a horizontal dart going right here and then a vertical dart going right here. The reason this one only has one dart is because you'll see this gap right here. This seam is going to swallow up that second dart that would be horizontal right here. So this will get sewn together and this dart gap will get swallowed into the seam. So that's our front bodice. And then we've got our skirt front. So this one is a large pattern piece. And you'll notice when we get to our lining pieces, our skirt, like our front skirt is one big piece with just darts for fitting. So the reason for that, that we had on the out, of our skirt is for design purposes. Uh, and we don't really need all of that seaming on the inside of the garment because it's not gonna be visible to anybody looking at the garment. So on the inside in the industry, they typically take out all of that seaming and make the inside of the garment as simple as possible to cut down on cost because the more seams you have, the longer it takes to produce and the more man hours you have to pay for, which raises the cost of the garment. So instead, our inside will not have the hip seam. It will not have the princess seam. Instead, it will just have a simple dart to help fit it to the person's waist. Okay, so one full front skirt with just a dart to help fit. We'll set this aside. And then this is my back. So I've got my back bodice facing and the fusing piece to go with it.
my back bodice waistband and my back bodice lining. So again, facing will go up top. Then the rest of the bodice will come in with the lining. So that creates one full back bodice. And then the waistband gets attached below that. Okay, so that creates our whole bodice, waist area, which will lead into our skirt. Okay, and then the last one to talk about is our back skirt lining. Again, this should be in blue. It printed out grayscale. Um, but you've got your back, uh, or sorry, I said back bodice, our back skirt, and then we just have our dart to fit it to the waistline. And this again is cut two because we're going to have that zipper down the center back. Okay, the next thing to talk about is fusing our pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my ironing board. I set it to the side. I guess I didn't go over the pocket piece. This is the pocket piece as well. So that one is cut four. So I've got four of those, two lefts. So I should do two this way and then two the other way. And those will be our four pocket pieces. Here's my iron board. So the, the only two pieces that require interfacing for this one is our uh, bodice front facing and our bodice back facing. So I'm going to do front first. I need to lay it face down so I'm looking at the wrong side of my fabric. And then lay my interfacing glue side down. So that's the bumpy side of your fabric. Glue side down and we'll get that fitted in there. And your, your interfacing should be an appropriate color for your fabric. So we don't wanna use dark interfacing on a light colored fabric so it doesn't show through. Make sure that you have your iron set to the appropriate heat. Um, so depending on what fabric you chose for your garment, you wanna make sure that you've got that um, listed on here. So linen and cotton are typically on the same um, heat setting. And then if you did wool for your dress, you need to make sure to lower that temperature. Um, and then the only other one to consider is your lining fabric. So if it's polyester, anytime we're pressing lining, you want to make sure to lower it to that polyester setting so that it don't melt your fabric. Okay, so that's my front facing, fully interfaced. Got some weird wrinkles in here. Okay, and then we've got to do our back facing. So this one you'll have two. Again, make sure that you're applying it to the back of your fabric.
Okay, <clears throat> so that's all of our pieces interfaced. Typically, our next thing would be surging, but with a fully lined garment, all of your seams are in between two layers of fabric. So if you think about how this is going to get constructed, we're going to have an entire outside dress made out of our main fabric. And then we're going to have an entire inside dress made out of a combination of facings and lining. And so those two layers end up getting put together to where the seams are sandwiched in between. And so the lining protects all of your seam allowances from getting um, that abrasion that happens whenever a person's skin is rubbing up against those seam allowances. So it protects it from fraying. So we do not actually need to surge at all. The only exception to that is if your fabric is really falling apart on you. So lining is one that's usually um, guilty of that. I'll show you an example out of my pieces. Here we go, here's my back skirt. So you may be able to see here on the edge where I've got quite a bit of fraying. So if your fabric is fraying really badly, then I would go ahead and serge your edges and you would do each piece individually. So if this is my back skirt, I would do my two pieces individually and I would serge everything that has a half inch seam allowance. So if you look on here for my skirt, all of this is a half inch seam allowance, even my waistline. So in this case, sorry, waistline, there you go. So in this case, I would serge that entire piece. And what that would do is it's just gonna protect my fabric from continuing to fray as I sew and as I handle these pieces, because the more you pick them up, the more you handle them, the more they're going to fray. And the issue with that is as it frays, you lose the edge of your fabric. And whenever you go to sew, you're going to shrink the size of your garment because the edge has now moved in. So if your fabric is really fraying badly, go ahead and serge those particular pieces. Um, lining, like I said, is bad with that. And then um, linen, sometimes if it's a looser weave linen, it can fray quite a bit. So if your pieces need it, go ahead and, and serge just the pieces that need it. Again, serge everything that's a half inch seam allowance. If it was, for instance, a facing piece, we've got a quarter inch here on the armhole and on the neckline. So those two areas, I would not serge, I would just serge the rest, okay? Okay, the next thing after surging for a garment is um, doing our darts for this particular garment. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark some of these darts with you. Let me grab my pieces. And this is just gonna be a refresher from last semester on how to mark these darts. And then I'm gonna go through, I've got a lot of these already pre-marked to save time, but I'm gonna go ahead and go through the pieces with you just so you know which ones have darts and which ones do not. Okay, so front, these are my front skirt pieces or front dress, the whole thing. Waistband doesn't have any darts. Our bodice front does. So this is the one I'm going to mark with you together. The rest of our skirt pieces for the front, do not have any darts. So the hip piece, the side front, and then the center front, all of those do not have any darts. So I'm just gonna set those aside. And we're gonna go ahead and mark these front darts here together. So I'm gonna lay my fabric out facing up. So right side up, put my pattern piece on top of that. And this one has, four darts in total, because remember we've got that horizontal dart that comes here to this drill hole. And then we've got that vertical dart that comes here to this drill hole. And then same on the other side, horizontal, 
vertical. Okay, so you've got four drill holes in total. The first thing you need to do is trace off those drill holes. So take your awl and punch through to grab the location of that drill hole right through the center. Okay, once you've got that and it's visible, then we can flip over to the back and mark them. We wanna mark them on the wrong side of our fabric. So I'm gonna flip over. I should still be able to see my little drill holes. <clears throat> I'm gonna mark this today in um, disappearing ink. This is uh, easier to see on camera. So that's part of the reason that I'm using it, but also I know for sure that it's going to go away and that it's not gonna stay on my fabric. So you wanna make sure that whatever marking tool you're using, that you have a good way to get it out because we don't want it to stay in um, after at the end of the garment. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see as I mark this a little bit better. So you might be able to see my drill hole right here. I'm gonna go ahead and mark my notches with this pen, even though they're already cut into just so y'all can see them on camera. There are my two notches. So what we need to do to mark this dart is we're going to find the center of those two notches. So mine's one and one eighth inch. So I'm gonna find right in the center of that. And from the center, I'm gonna go up to my drill hole and past half an inch. Because remember that drill hole is not the actual tip of our dart. It's half an inch in. So from my ruler, I'm gonna connect that drill hole to that center point. And then half an inch past is where I'm actually going to make my little cross mark. Okay, so there's my little cross mark. And then from that cross mark, I'm gonna go out to those notches. So that's what it should look like. My drill hole is right here. So again, half an inch in is the drill hole. Okay, I'm gonna mark my horizontal one here. I'm gonna turn it so that I can see it facing me. So again, drill hole right here. And then my two notches are right there, right in the center. It should be right at this tip where it um, points out, but I'll double check it. Yeah. So right there's the center. Go from there to your drill hole, past half an inch, and make your little crosshair. And then connect from there to your notches. So there's my second one marked. I'm gonna do the same on the other half of my garment. And all of these, all of the darts that you're gonna have for this entire dress will be half an inch past the drill hole. The only time that measurement changes is for a fisheye dart, which we don't have on this garment. We did that last semester. So all of them are half an inch past. And we've got quite a lot of darts on this garment, excuse me. So, by the time we get through, you will be a dart expert. We've got them on the shell of our garment and on the um, inside layers.
Okay, so there's all four of those darts marked on my front. Okay, now just going through the rest of the pieces to show you where those darts are. Okay, so these are my back skirt pieces. I've got my back waistband, no darts on there. Back bodice will have one each. And then our skirt pieces don't have any. So skirt hip, side back, and center back, none of those have any. So I'll set those aside. And then for our back one, we have, this one was a cut two. So they each have one single dart. And you can see mine's starting to fade because I, March these before class with that disappearing ink. So it's already starting to disappear on me, but I've got both of those already pre-marked right here. Okay. Shush. Sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> Okay, so skirt back lining. Again, this is a cut two, and you'll have a dart up here at the waistline. So I've already got those marked as well. Skirt front lining. Again, this one is opened up into a full pattern piece. So this one will have two, one on the right, one on the left. And I've already got those pre-marked. And every dart that I'm marking, I'm marking on the wrong side of my fabric. So this is the wrong side of my lining. And I've got that marked right here. Okay, the rest of our lining pieces, our pocket bag does not have any, so I can set that aside. Our waistband for the front does not have any, so I can set that aside. Um, our waistband for the back, here's my waistband for the back does not have any, so I can set that aside. And then the last two pieces we've got are the bodice front lining. And again, that one's a full piece. So I've marked both of those two. You have one on either side. And then our bodice back lining is a cut two. And you'll have one on either side. Okay, so make sure you get all of those marked through. And then we're gonna go through how to stitch them I'm just going to stitch a couple of them. I'm not gonna do all of them to save time, but I wanna show you at least one on lining so I can show you how to kind of handle that when you're pinning. And then I wanna show you at, um, the two that are on the front of your garment. Okay, so this is our bodice back lining. I'll go ahead and do at least one on here. So when we're pinning them, I'll zoom in again. When we're pinning them, they are marked on the wrong side of the fabric. That way we can fold it in half and we're still looking at that wrong side. So when we fold it, it's right sides together. So fold that right sides together, match up your notches at the edge. Put a pin in that and then go to your cross mark and fold it right down the center of that cross mark and mark that. So that's the very tip of your dart. And then in between, 
you want to match up those dart legs. So push your pin through one side. On the other side, it needs to be coming out of the dart leg. So that way, you know, those are matching up one right on top of the other. And for your lining fabric, you will probably want to get your pins a little closer together uh, because your fabric is very slippery. So um, it, will, it will want to move on you more. So have a, a few more pins in there to keep it managed. Okay. Okay, so there's one dart pinned on, this is my back bodice lining. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab my cotton one. This is my bodice front. I'm gonna go ahead and do two on this one because there's a horizontal and a vertical. And when we get to pressing, those two are gonna press differently. So we need to make sure we'll do both of those. Okay, so again, fold it in half, right sides together. Match up your notches. Fold your crosshair directly down the center and then go through and match up your dart leg. So there's my horizontal one. I'm gonna go ahead and pin my vertical one as well. We'll see, I might have to pin that one later because it's gonna be in the way. So I'll pin that one at the sewing machine. Okay, let's go ahead and go over to stitch these. Okay, so coming over here, I'm gonna stitch the cotton ones first because those are a little bit easier. So I'm gonna start right at that notch. I can do my back stitch right here at the edge and then follow along that dart leg. It's hard to see on camera, but my marking is here. So I'm following right along with that marking. Until I get up to that drill hole. So my drill hole should be half an inch above where my last pin is. Because that last pin is the very tip of our dart. So when I get to my drill hole, I should be super close to the edge of my fabric. And then for that last half inch from the drill hole to the crosshair, you wanna get as close to the edge as possible so that you get a really narrow tip of your dart. And then at the very last minute, you'll stitch off the edge. Do not back stitch, just go ahead and pull it off. And so I'll show you, that's the, mine's a little, Got a little bump in there, so that's not exactly perfect, but you can see how narrow the tip of my stitching is. So how narrow that um, tip of the dart gets. I'll do better on the next one. <laughs> okay, go ahead and leave those tails. We're gonna cut off, so I've left some tails here because what we're going to do is hand tie the end of our dart to finish off those threads. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pin and stitch my vertical one. I'm just pinning it right now off camera because it's a little too close for you to see. So this is my vertical one on the same cotton fabric. Gosh. Back stitch right at the notch. Okay. 
follow that stitch line or that um, marked line all the way until you get to that drill hole, which is about there. And then that last half inch, you wanna get as close to the edge as possible. And then right at the crosshair, you stitch off the edge. There we go. Leave those tails so you can hand tie. This one is a better example of that tip. So it didn't have that little bump in there. You can see there. There we go. You can see there that really nice narrow tip of the dart. And then I've got my tail sticking off so I can hand tie that. Okay. Okay, let's do the lining one. For the lining, it's gonna be the same, but this one is very slippery. So I put my pins closer together, and then I also like to keep it taut. So I'm gonna do my back stitch first. Feel that tangled in there. Um, so as I do this one, I kind of pull back on this fabric a little bit as I go so that it stays taut and it helps um, my fabric keep from losing a lot. That puts on my foot. And again, there's a really narrow tip on that dart. That's gonna help you whenever you go to press, it's going to prevent you from having a bubble or a dimple right there at that dart tip. Okay, let's go press these. Okay, so pressing the cotton first, you're going to need to use your ham to press these because we're pressing 3D shape into it. I'm going to hand tie the end. So get those little tails and separate them. And then you can double knot them. So just tie them together like you're tying a shoe, a shoelace. And do that twice so it's double knotted. And then you can cut off that excess. And then down here where you did that back stitch, you can just cut off your excess tails as well. Okay, for my vertical one, um, so your darts, any of your vertical darts need to get pressed towards center front or center back. This is a front piece. So the center of that piece is right here, center front. It's also marked on your pattern pieces. So if you look at your actual pattern piece, there is a little marking that says CF. That's for center front. So if you're ever wondering where center front, where is center back, just refer back to your pattern piece. So for this vertical dart, that excess needs to go over towards the center. If I was doing this one here, it would get pressed over towards the center. So they should be facing each other. If it's a, ver it's a, if it's a horizontal dart here, the excess gets pressed down towards the floor or towards the bottom of the garment. So we'll do that for both of these. This side one, put the tip of the dart towards the more narrow part of your ham. Separate those layers really, really well because you want that really flat front on the other side of your dart. So really pull 
those sides of it apart and then fold that dart excess in the direction that you need to and we're going to press it. We want to press it all the way through the tip so we get a really nice transition from the dart into the rest of the fabric and we don't end up with a little dimple or a bubble. Okay, so that is my horizontal dart pressed for my vertical dart. It's gonna go over towards center front. Separate those layers. So when I flip this over, I should now have this 3D shape pressed into my garment. I shouldn't have any bubbles or dimples at the tips of my darts. And then you'll do the exact same for the other half of the piece. For your lining, Again, we're still gonna use the cotton side of our ham. The only exception to that is if you chose wool fabric for your dress, then you would use the wool for your shell. This is not the one I saw. Okay, cut off those ends where the back stitch was, and then hand tie the ones where the tip of the dart is. And then this is a good example of a back piece. So this one, let me grab the pattern piece for it. I can find it. Where did you go? Here it is. Okay, so this one is a cut two, and if you're trying to figure out where is center back, which side am I supposed to press this to, you can look at your pattern piece and we've got center back labeled. Also, center back is always going to be straight <coughs> for this particular garment. That doesn't mean always for every garment, that means always for this garment. So for this particular garment, our center back is always straight. So if I look at this and I get that straight side, I know that's my center back. And if I'm questioning it, I can always go back and look at my pattern for center back. So for this one, I'm going to press it towards that side. Make sure to lower the temperature of your iron because you're now pressing lining. You don't want to melt it. And again, separate those parts so you get that flat front and then press it all the way down to the tip. Okay, and you should get that really nice flat front on the other side. And then you'll see my marking tool bled through. So it's a good thing that this is the disappearing ink because that will eventually evaporate and disappear. If I had used something that was not going to come out easily, then that would be visible on my garment. So that's my back bodice piece. I think there, this morning I was trying to count, I think there are like 14 darts in total. There's quite a lot. So make sure that you go through this process for all 14, that you get them all stitched, uh, well marked properly with that half inch above the drill hole, um, and then stitched and pressed to the proper side.
Last pattern piece we have to press is our front bodice. So this one is with our V-neck. Center is easier to find because we've got a full mirrored piece. So I'm going to press both of these darts. The vertical one gets pressed towards center front. And we'll talk about the horizontal one in just a second. Okay, the horizontal one. Horizontal darts get pressed down towards the floor. So this start that's right here, horizontal, the excess is going to get pressed down towards the waist or towards the bottom of the garment. Okay, that's as far as we're going for today. So I want you to keep up with what we're doing. So make sure by next class, you get everything cut out and you stitch all of your darts, okay? Are there any questions about these darts before we move on? You'll see it kind of creates that 3D shape. So here, it already looks like a bust would fit under there. We've got that 3D shape versus this one that's flat. Okay, let's go back to my face-to-face -face camera. Okay, so that is it for today. If there are any questions, I can answer those. Make sure that you signed in.